Hey, UCF. 56 years old, and look how cute you are. And look how cute I am. Hi, guys. It's your fellow night, Magical Kathy here, and I'm making this video diary to help you survive our special university. I've been there, I survived, so just take my advice. So as you may be able to tell from the title of the video, I'm here to provide you with some advice to survive your freshman year at UCF. I'm actually gonna sit up here because I was kneeling on the ground and my knees hurt. Anyway, the orientation season is approaching very quickly and I've actually started my training as an O-teamer already. I just wanted to provide like a little video with a bunch of information that can help you have a successful freshman year at UCF and make you a successful night overall. Whether you're looking at UCF as a specific option for college or transferring to UCF or you're just like graduating high school and about to attend college and want some information on what college life is like, you've come to the right video. Most of these tips are going to be specifically related to my experience from UCF as well as like the events that UCF holds, but most of the roommate orientation and general information is all the same for like most universities. Just a warning, there's a lot of information in this video, so if you want to like take notes or something, that's great. Better yet, you could subscribe to my channel so you can like always go back to this video. You can save it to a playlist. You can even give it a thumbs up so it ends up in your liked videos category. So for the sake of time, I'm just going to get right into it. <laughs> Firstly, we have orientations. Orientation takes place all throughout the summer. June, July, and August. Mine was June 26th and 27th. I signed up for one of the earlier ones because I had like travel plans and I also recommend that you do that too so that you can get your orientation out of the way. But if you wanted to sign up for one of the later ones, I know everyone's schedule is kind of different so you do you. It is a two day affair and depending on when you go, you might already be moved in. I know that some people that had the later orientations that were in August may have already moved some of their stuff into their dorm rooms. During orientation, you receive a campus wide tour of all the most important locations on campus. Then there are some icebreakers, but not too many because we know how people like feel about that. Plus it can start some really serious arguments. Pineapple on pizza, big no no. Big no, 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 no. For the 2020 orientation, of course, it's gonna be a little bit different because it'll be online due to the pandemic that's going on. But we still have a very effective plan in order to ensure that all freshmen and transfer students get all the information that they need to be a successful night. Moving on, there are different seminars that you have to attend during orientation. These seminars talk about stuff like campus safety, rules and regulations, and even how to save money, like buying textbooks in the bookstore or renting them online. Take it from me, you're gonna want to check that one out because it's saving money, so... Yeah. To end orientation with meeting your academic advisor and scheduling and registering for your fall semester classes. If you're worried about not getting a specific class, do not worry because there are specific slots saved just for incoming freshmen especially for the general ed classes that everyone has to take in order to get their, like, degree. We want to give everyone a fair chance to register for the classes that they want and that fit their schedule. Oh my god, my knuckle just cracked. However, there are some classes that you still have to compete for, whether it's like a class specific to your major. For me, it was like introduction to hospitality. Luckily, I got into that for my fall semester. I loved it. If you're a Rosen major, I totally recommend you take it with Professor Deb. What helps is to have your classes all written out and then you put those classes into your shopping cart on your My UCF student account. Basically, just your student account that helps you uh, deal with finances, deal with classes, and a lot more. Besides, regi ugh. Besides registering for classes, you also have the option to print out your student ID, which will be your student ID, like only you. That's great. Don't worry too much about everything in orientation because O-teamers like me will explain everything to you and we will always be there as a peer mentor, peer leader for you to answer any questions that you or your family has. What's cool about orientation is you also get swag. This was the 2019 orientation shirt and I think it's actually pretty dope. So yeah, you get swag. Moving on, something that 
college freshmen tend to have a lot of anxiety about are the roommates. How I found my roommates was actually through the Facebook account for the class of 2023. What you do on the Facebook is you post a little bit about yourself and then people can reply and you guys talk to each other and if you both still need roommates, you kind of just like figure it out then. One of my roommates actually replied to my post and she said that she was from out of state too and apparently we actually live like 20 minutes away from each other and I had no idea. That was really cool and then I got to schedule my orientation with her and her mom. For me, I was really nervous about coming to Florida because it's so far away. Being the only person that's coming to UCF from my high school class was really nerve wracking because I didn't know anyone. But being anxious and nervous is something totally normal because like everyone's sort of in the same boat as you. But if you don't end up finding anyone on the Facebook, you also have the option to complete a roommate matching survey on the housing portal. You can answer questions like, do you like to stay up late? Do you like it clean? Do you like it cold or hot in the apartment or suite or dorm room, wherever you choose to live? You can use this information to find people that have similar answers to you and then you can find your roommates through that. Now, if you really can't find anyone, UCF will just choose randomized roommates for you. I was really happy to find my roommates through Facebook. It was really cool because they were all in the out-of-state program, which I'll get into later. Having people that you can sort of relate to really, really helped. And one of them is actually my best friend now at UCF, so you never know where your story is going to take you. Let's talk about on-campus housing. There are a total of thir 13 on-campus housing communities. For my freshman year, I lived in the Neptune community for the Out-of-State Student Mentoring Program, also known as the AWESOME Program. These communities that are specific to organizations are called Living Learning Communities. So if you are an out-of-state student like me, you are probably going to be placed in the Neptune building communities. Neptune is a four-person suite, so you have three other roommates, and then you have two private bathrooms, which is nice. No communal bathrooms. Bless. Plus, here's a really good perk. All on-campus housing gets weekly housekeeping service. That day is usually specified on a small note card hung up by the mirror outside of your private bathrooms. Okay, so the first week of classes. This is something that you're probably really anxious and stressed about, which are your like actual classes. What are they like? Where do I go? What if I get lost? What happens? Oh my god! Ah! Don't worry, stay calm. I'm here to tell you everything you need to know. So major advice that my OT team actually gave me during my orientation was to take a walk around campus before classes even start. Familiarizing yourself with campus is super important, so me and one of my roommates actually went around campus the Sunday before classes started and we walked around and just got to know like which buildings were which and where we had classes according to our schedules. I also recommend that you put your schedule in your phone so that when you're scheduling like work shifts or social events, you don't want to overlap it with a class. It's also going to be a while before you're back on campus, especially if you had one of the earlier orientations aka me. So you want to just walk around. The campus is huge so it's a lot of exercise. That's a perk. We are the largest university in the nation so you might want to know where your classes are. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the walk from Neptune all the way to like some of the classroom buildings is like a 20-25 minute walk. Wear sneakers and give yourself enough time between different events and like different things that you have to do because you don't want to be late, especially for your first day. <laughs> but I also want to say that if you look at UCF as a whole, you'll realize that it's just a big circle. So if you leave early enough and just follow the sidewalk around the student union, you'll eventually find a place that you're like kind of familiar with and you'll get to your class that way. But I do recommend you just familiarize yourself with the campus and figure out the easiest way to get from to and fro. If you do take the sidewalk and do end up walking in a bigger circle than you have to, which I actually have done in the past, 
you'll get a few extra minutes to enjoy the beautiful campus. Campus was actually a huge part of my decision to go to UCF. I always knew I wanted to go to a university that had a campus that was really welcoming and also fitted my personality. I never thought that I'd be attending the largest school in the nation, but the palm trees and everyone just being around and meeting new people all the time is that welcoming environment that we have. It seemed, it's a community. Speaking of the palm trees, for the first week and seeing palm trees everywhere, I felt like I was on vacation instead of like actually attending school. It, it's amazing. I wish you the best of luck to getting to class on time for the first week. So transportation. So if you're like me and you want those five extra minutes of sleep during a nap, like in between classes and stuff, but you don't want to be late to your next class, there are a lot of other options for you to get around campus. You can drive if you have a car. There are many parking garages located all around campus. Granted, you do need a parking pass depending on what garages you'll be parking at most often because they can't just have like students driving rogue everywhere. Ooh. There are also bikes that the SGA can rent out to you. We originally had green bikes, but those didn't last too long. Yeah, there are so, so, so many skateboards all around campus. I don't think you'll go like one day or one hour walking around campus without seeing someone skateboarding. UCF has also teamed up with Spin, which is a scooter company. They are super fun, but please, please, please be super careful while riding them because they are electric scooters. Just be aware that there are people that are still walking, so please don't text and scoot. Long story short, I, along with other students who are walking, do not want to get run over. Again. But that's another story to tell another day. If you have classes on a separate campus, there are shuttles that can take you to either the downtown campus or the Rosen campus. I use the shuttles very often because they are very convenient for me. There are shuttles that also run to other places near campus, like the public supermarket. I'll attach a link with more information on transportation as well as the spin scooters in the description below. So there are so many welcome events within the first week of classes and even before classes begin, the entire first week is called Pegasus Palooza. Pegasus because UCF's academic mascot is the Pegasus while the athletic mascot is Nitro. There's a carnival, a move-in Palooza, which is held at the leisure pool. Here's a picture from when I went to Palooza this year. Yeah, you can see how crowded it gets. There's a link launch and a night rave, which are basically two sort of like party events that really introduce you to like the fun side of UCF and to the link program. Now Link does something special for freshmen and transfer students. Link does a auction through Facebook where you go to different events throughout the semester and you collect link loot. And then by the end, if you have a certain amount of link loot, you can bid on like airpods, scholarships, t-shirts, gift cards, a bunch of stuff. It's really fun. I tried bidding on everything but I didn't find out about the link loot and the goose chase app until like mid semester so I was kind of behind. Then there's the nighting. This is a mandatory event that all freshmen must attend. Just because it's mandatory doesn't mean that it's not fun. From memory it was like super interesting and like really really fun. Your entire class is there, so it's like huge. Always a night. Drive on! And then you become an official part of UCF. Then there's a bunch of other events like comedy night, opening night, movie night, table of UCF, Acapalooza, Link's amazing race, which might not happen this year, but hopefully we bring it back. It's just dependent on Link's budget at this point. Darn pandemic and Knights of Illusions where a magician comes in. I didn't get a chance to go to that one and I'm really upset because I wanted to. My advice for navigating and attending these events is to go, literally go, because they're so much fun and you can meet so many different people. I got to like get reacquainted with people that I met during orientation and also meet their roommates and a bunch of other people. Since everyone's in the same boat as you, just saying hi and everything is really, really cool. You make a lot of friends at those events. Yay to new friendships! Next we have locations. Here are some locations that I think 
you guys should know about so that you have somewhat of an idea of what campus looks like, especially if you've never visited campus. Firstly, the student union. The student union is the heart of campus, right smack in the middle of that big circle we call UCF. It's about four to five floors. There's a food court inside with a steak and shake, Panda Express, Qdoba, Huey Magoo's, and a Chili's. Huey Magoo's is really interesting because I literally did not know that it existed until I came down here. They make some of the best chicken tenders and chicken sandwiches I've ever tried. And they're so affordable too. We love saving money. There's a small CVS-like store called Night Stop. There's also a Smoothie King right outside of the Student Union. There's the Pegasus Ballroom, which is where a part of your orientation will be held if it's not online like this year. There's also a bike shop, a game room, the police department, and student services. On the second floor, we can find the SGA office. Now, colleges don't provide you with like testing materials, so you're gonna have to like buy your own Scantrons and your own green books. But wait, there's a hack to that. If you go to the SGA office once every day, you can get either one free green book, one free pink Scantron, or one free brown Scantron. I don't know why there's two colored Scantrons. I've never had to use the brown one, but I guess some people do. But you can only get one a day. What I did was I just stocked up on them in this folder right here. No, it's not focusing. Ah, there we go. So I have my green books and my pink Scantrons here, and you don't know how many times this folder has saved my life and someone else's. A lot of people actually forget to get Scantrons or green books for testing, and it's nice when you have an extra and you can save their life and then they owe you one. Don't worry about it, you can just owe me. No, I'm kidding, you just have each other's backs. If you're walking to class already, you're probably gonna pass the student union because it's in the middle of campus. So why not go in, go to the second floor real quick, pick up a Scantron or a green book, and then just like stock up on it so that you don't have to worry about it for finals or midterms. Now if you don't feel like collecting one a day and you just need a bunch, you can always go to the bookstore and purchase a pack. They also have vending machines in some of the classroom buildings where you can buy a pack that way. Now my favorite part of the student union is the SGA Ticket Center. Ah! The SGA Ticket Center gives UCF students discounted tickets to the theme parks around the Florida area. They give you universal tickets, they give you fun spot tickets, and they even give you Disney tickets, yes! I've attached the link in the description below about the ticket prices as well as the ticket center in general. Finally, the most important part of the student union is our giant seal. Art, art. Now every university has their tradition where you can't do this or you're not gonna graduate. Ours is the giant seal, which is the Pegasus logo in the middle of the first floor of the student union. Rumor has it that if you step on it, you won't graduate, so don't step on it. It usually has a red velvet rope all around it so you don't have to worry too much. Or during the week of graduation, you have to be just a little bit more careful because they remove those ropes. Imagine working so hard for three, four years and then stepping on the seal and not graduating. <gasps> that would be terrible. The John T. Washington Center, also known as the Breezeway. This small area includes the UCF bookstore, there's also a Domino's, victim services, a skate shop, and a Chick-fil-A. You have to find a right, perfect time to go because it does get super crowded. Once you exit the breezeway coming from the student union, to your left you'll find the John C. Hitt Library. The library is one of the oldest buildings on campus. In the library you can find books, study spaces, another cafe, of course, because coffee while studying for some people is a necessity. A writing center where you can get your essays checked and you can make appointments to meet up with like tutors. It's a great place to study except for midterm and finals week because it gets super crowded. I usually just study in the common room of my dorm. You can study by the reflection pond. There's sitting areas around it. Speaking of the reflection pond, it's right in front of the library and we hold one of our most famous homecoming events at the Reflection Pond called Spirit Splash. Students come all together, then they all run in at the same time and try and catch a duck. UCF is famous for their rubber ducks. 
and they change them every single year. So during homecoming week, there's a special themed duck. The UCF cheerleaders, UCF football players, the president and the band and everyone is just throwing ducks into the reflection pond. I've never caught one. <laughs> But that was also because I didn't have time to go. My professor decided to schedule a test the day of Spirit Splash and the time of Spirit Splash. So I literally was only able to go for like five minutes and then I had to leave before everyone started running in. Maybe I'll catch a duck next time. Right past the reflection pond across from the library is Millican Hall. Millican Hall is where you can get all your financial needs taken care of. The only time I've ever been in Millican Hall was to confirm my in-state tuition for the following year. Also, Millican Hall is one of the prettiest buildings on campus. I think that it's so great if you want like a nice insta pick and everything. It's, it's just very pretty and there's flowers everywhere. Next we have the Recreation and Wellness Center. It's two floors. It has weight rooms, sports areas like volleyball nets, basketball nets set up. It has a huge track on the second floor. There are multiple exercise machines that are on both the first and second floor. They also have a huge rock wall that you can climb for exercise. Everyone on campus wants to do it. I still haven't done it. I was on the sign-up sheet, but then I forgot that I had class and I had to leave, take a shower and go to class. I went to a spin class once, which was super fun, but super tiring. I was literally dripping sweat at the end of it. It, it was crazy. The best part is that there is a separate Smoothie King from the one outside of the Student Union in the RWC. So if you want a quick boost of nutrition after your workout, or if you live in Academic Village and just want to wake up and get breakfast at Smoothie King, it's a great place to go. Also, I should mention that in order to get into the RWC, you need to have your student ID, they swipe it, and then you go in and it, everything is completely free to use. Get ripped. <laughs> I can't with myself. So I mentioned the Addition Financial Arena when I was talking about the welcome events earlier in this video. This is not only where the welcoming events will take place, but also where sporting events will take place. Right behind the Addition Financial Arena, we have Spectrum Stadium. This is where all of our football games are held. And let me tell you, UCF is a huge football school. Coming to UCF, I didn't know a lot about football, and I still don't really but I know a little bit more don't have to understand the game of football to have a great time at the football games going to a game was like hella fun team and the cheerleaders and all the fans and the other students were just so hype like that's the only word I can really use to describe it our mascots nitro a pegasus and even Nugget the Pony comes out on the field in the beginning it's so cool then we have the marching knights that perform and are playing like the UCF anthem the entire time and it's so much energy that you just have to experience it for yourself. Then you should know about the bounce house. <laughs> the bounce house is called the bounce house because the stadium literally shakes. Because everyone's jumping up and down to the zombie nation anthem. Oh, oh, it's quite an experience and super fun and super cool. Make sure you're staying hydrated though because it is in Florida heat. You can only bring a clear bag into the sporting events at UCF because of security reasons. Friends, as much as I love the TV show, I'm here to talk to you guys about making friends. College is really different from high school because you don't see the same people every single day. I mean, if you really tried to, then it would be a different story. Because UCF has over 68,000 students, it's really hard to see the same people every single day. For my first semester, it was weird because I kept running into this one guy every single day at like the strangest times too. But that leads me to tell you about a habit I've developed in my freshman year. Be the first person to say hi to someone. I know it takes a little bit of courage, but sometimes all it takes is that one word to start a conversation with them to lead to new friendships. An easy way to make friends too is through your orientation small group. I know that orientation is online for this summer, but they're all going through the same thing that you're going through, so why not make connections with people that way and find out stuff that you guys have in common. I have a bunch of friends now from the Rosen College that share like the same major as me or a similar major to me, and we're all really close and still hang out and everything. Of course not now, because we're all quarantined at home. Everyone wants to fit in, and I've realized that a lot of people feel the same way that you do. Therefore, being brave and being the first person to say hi can lead to wonderful friendships. That goes for me too. If you guys see me on campus, please say hi to me if I don't say hi to you guys first. That'll be fun.
no one really knows what they're doing completely, like 100%. And if they do, they're either lying to you or they've just taken many, many tours of the campus and like have studied UCF's history and everything. They probably would know more than me if they did that. But they still haven't had the experience of actually being at UCF and going through freshman year. So hopefully you'll have a great freshman year just like I did. It's super important to get involved on campus. I actually got involved with the out-of-state student mentoring program and went to like events that they hosted. There are over 650 student organizations on campus. And if you don't like any of those 650, you can create your own. I'm personally involved in UCF's first year experience the Out-of-State Student Mentoring Program, the LEAD Scholars Academy, as well as the Human Resources Development Association and Future Theme Park Leaders Association. I know that sounds like a lot, but compared to like the 650 student organizations on the UCF campus, plus the additional ones on the downtown and Rosen College campus, that's not a lot. <laughs> you definitely have a lot of options, and there's so many different tabling events, especially during the first week, where everyone's like, join this, join that. Definitely take those flyers, look into it, find out what clubs that you actually are passionate about, what you're passionate about, and what clubs can fit your time schedule. Because joining these clubs is not only gonna like build your resume, it's also letting others know that you're interested in this and that helps you make friends too. For my first semester, the awesome program was the most awesome program. Yeah, with myself. If you're an out-of-state student, you're automatically put into the awesome program. It's about attending those events and getting involved. That really can help you make friends and learn more about the university. You're assigned a peer mentor, but you're kind of able to talk to like all the different peer mentors. Awesome has a lot of special events. These include the Cocoa Beach trip, volunteer day, the theme park trips, which for the fall semester, we went to Universal and Islands of Adventure. Here's a picture. For the spring semester, we were able to go to the Magic Kingdom, so that was fun. Now this video is a little longer than I expected, but I'm hoping that all this information helped you in some way and provided like some sort of a guide for you to feel more comfortable about your transition to UCF. I have linked a bunch of Instagram handles, links to different departments regarding UCF's housing, financial needs, and a bunch more stuff just all in the description below feel free to dm me on instagram at kathy x lee if you have any more questions i love to answer them for you and if you're in my small group this summer feel free to just say hi and be like i watched your video i would be so flattered to hear that because that is so sweet same with if you see me on campus like i said before if you see me on campus feel free to say hi like i love meeting new people Okay, I'm on my knees again for this closing, but feel free to give this video a thumbs up as well as hit that subscribe button below. If you're going to survive college life, better wish yourself some good luck, Freshie. You're going to love who you turn out to be. Hey in there, Freshie.